I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. Hello friends, thank you so much for joining us sir, once more. Uh, thank you so much for joining Adventist Angels watching our Radio Live International. Even as we share uh, the message of the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ and to prepare a people for the second uh, coming of Jesus Christ. Friends, thank you so much for those who don't know me. My name is Evangelist King Osiemo and I'm glad to be with you today. The voice which is to be heard this time is the three angels' messages going to the ends of the earth, eroding that uh, people should worship the one who made. They should listen to the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, because that is our calling in such a time like this. The three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14 is a direction so that people can remember the creator of the universe so that they can not receive counsel from men but they receive counsel from the wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father whom we have been given unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and he is the one we should ask counsel from in the book of proverbs chapter 8 the Bible tells me jesus says uh, counsel is mine i am wisdom i am understanding so we need to seek counsel from him so thank you for today we want to look upon here there is a woman spoken there on it, the book of uh, uh, revelation chapter 17 and this woman is carrying a cup and that cup as you know it usually carries doctrines you know jesus christ break the uh, the bread and also gave them the cup it was symbolizing his blood and it was symbolizing his body the bread is the uh, the, uh, the bread is the Bread and the blood is representing also the doctrines of Jesus Christ, including the word of God. So here there is a woman having a counterfeit through this form of messages. And you know, it is traditions of men which has actually made the world very mad. We call it, where do we get wine from? We get wine from the vine. And uh, the vine we actually gives the, the wine, the doctrines. Who is the vine? Jesus Christ said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And we cannot produce uh, fruits by our own, except Jesus Christ abide in us. So, when uh, also this woman is having wine, what kind of wine which has made the world mad, that has uh, united the world? So, today we are going to see that wine are doctrines. And the title for today is Popist Doctrine, Cancel Culture, a Cup and Dialogue of Religions. Cancel Culture, Cup and Dialogue of Religions. So, the vine of Sodom, the wine of the false pride. Let's humble ourselves as we pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this auspicious time you have granted unto us as your people. Father, you have called us from all nations of the earth and even to every place our soul and tongue and people that we may gather together and come to tea the one who has created and we should ask counsel from you alone and we shall be saved father today lord i desire to speak thy word not i but thee to speak as it seems good to you lead and direct my paths give me thy holy spirit to guide me to the end Bless your own people over the world and give us peace. Through the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we believe. Amen. Friends, thank you uh, so much for joining and uh, thank you so much for being uh, with me in such a time like this. So today, in a major sense, we will be uh, considering our messages as they come to you from our studios. So you can find us through uh, the contacts on the screen. Our website is AdventistAngelsWatchNaRadio.com our email is adventistangelswatchonaradio at outlook.com and our contacts as they are given in uh, uh, the lineup they are on. So thank you so much. Let's go direct to the points and consider 
the message for today as it comes to you uh, in such an hour like this. So friends, uh, the times which we live uh, are solemn times whereby we have been having uh, what did you understand friends for me not going so far what do you understand what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and it has been prophesied that in the last days we should expect it the same when you hear the vine of Sodom what comes to your mind let's go to the scriptures let's start with the book of Daniel chapter 8 okay let's start with the Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 31 which says for their rock is not as our rock even our enemies themselves are being judges for their vine is not of the vine, uh, for their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the field of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their crusters are pita. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of acids. Who is the rock? Jesus Christ is the rock. So for their rock is not our rock. Who is also described in the scriptures as the rock? It is Jesus. At one time when he was describing to Peter, he asked who the people were saying he was, he said uh, he was Christ. And he said, in this I Christ, this I the rock, upon this foundation will I raid my church and nothing shall shake it. As long as we abide in him, we shall produce fruits. That is what General Jesus Christ was saying. Their rock is not our rock. It's not like our rock. Uh, even the enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they can be a witness. Indeed, that, that the rock is not the rock, the principle, pure principle of the gospel. So their vine is of the vine of Sodom. So there is a vine which produces wine, wine of Sodom. Teachings, doctrines advocating sodomy or such like confusion which happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Whereby people were having the mind of the world, like Lotus wife are the mind of the world of that city of all the things which were in that city so their field is the field of gomorrah their grapes are grapes of gall peter indeed their crusters are peter you know why it also represents the uh it also represents the commandments the doctrines it represents the commandments so uh in revelation chapter 13 verses 4 uh okay in the book of revelation uh, Okay, let me see. I was saying that uh, their wine is the poison of dragons. So this wine is the poison of dragons. What did you understand by as poison? Is something good? It destroys friends. It is the poison of dragons. Dragons. So the dragon represents the devil. These are demons. These are spirits of devils. And the cruel venom of acids. Venom represents the serpent. That cruel serpent. That evil serpent. What does cruel also mean? It means uh, vice. In the book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 23, we have a king who was to come, who was to come, or who was prophesied to come in these last days, which we are. Daniel chapter 8 23, the Bible says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, that is in the last kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of vice countenance, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. So there is another king who is standing up in these last days, a counterfeit Christ in these last days, a king of five continents, and understanding dark sentences. He does not understand the scriptures, but he understands dark sentences. And he shall stand up. When he stands up, actually, in usual sense, he stands against Jesus Christ. So their wine, that is, their doctrines are poison of devils or dragons and the cruel venom of acid so it will speak like a dragon in revelation chapter 13 verse 4 and they worshiped the dragon which gave power what is this who is the dragon is the, is the devil so they worshiped the the devil who gave power unto the beast who is the beast the first beast there on represented is a man sitting in the temple of god calling himself that is god we have covered this before is second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses uh, 3 uh, to 12 uh, which says, let no man deceive you by another means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away fast. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, so that he as God, sit in the temple of God, calling himself that he is God. So, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power. What is power? It is scriptures. This is the power of the scriptures, or even the power of the Holy Spirit. The book of... Uh, uh, we will consider there on as we move uh, forward in such a sense 
we are going to understand that the power represents the scriptures, the power of the scriptures, the word of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power. Let's see. Uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So the dragon gave power unto the beast. The dragon gave this man, gave this antichrist, the scriptures, traditions of men, which were against the scriptures. So I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We have a gospel here of Jesus Christ, which is unto salvation. But we have also a counterfeit gospel in the world today. And that counterfeit gospel leads men to destruction. Let's see. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also the Greek. That person who received the gospel must believe. It is first to the Jews, and also to the Greeks, that is to the Gentiles. That person must believe. What can I ask you? Whatever you give or you baptize a child, if it's just a child, will you believe? No. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2, verse 32 says, For their vine is the vine of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the field of the Gomorrah. So we have a problem today, my dear brother, my dear sister. Generally, before we go any further, the problem we have today is uh, an intrusion over the issue of uh, Sodom in the land, gayism, lesbianism and so forth and uh, such like uh, all these things are invading the church like a whirlwind where shall we stand as god's people it is a great test and we have seen a lot of compromises in the land where shall we stand we understand that our vine is the vine of sodom but our vine is the rock jesus christ the rock of ages where shall we stand we need to stand upon the rock of jesus christ let's see here it is a man there is a man who is advocating the same message yeah? and it's actually carrying a vine of sodom i saw chapter 31 verse 3 whose spirit is this but the spirit of jesus christ was against these evil doctrines i saw chapter 61 verse 3 jesus christ speaks these words it was prophesied that he was to come to appoint unto them that uh mourn in zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for money the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord and the might and and uh, that he might be glorified we have a uh, people here who are to come in these last days to appoint unto them that money is done so the people who are to be appointed are those people who are sighing and crying for the abominations which are dying are uh, being done in the land the abomination is like sodomy and uh, such like several uh, uh, abominations which are being done in the land. They must be mourning, sighing and crying. Ezekiel says they must be sighing and crying for the abominations which are done in the land. They shall uh, be given beauty for ashes. That's prayer. That is fasting. The oil of joy for mourning. They shall be given the spirit of the Lord <coughs> so that they can be able to sound the alarm. The oil of joy. Oil, oil represents the Holy Spirit and also represents grace. So oil for the money they shall be given the spirit just Christ had to speak to jerusalem because he said the spirit of the lord is upon me the holy spirit the oil he had the oil which was poured upon him he was anointed to appoint unto them that mourn zion so we have been also appointed the government of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness we should be called the trees of righteousness like Jesus Christ did, he said, I am the vine. We shall also go forward because we have been appointed. We have been given the spirit. So we should produce the fruits. If we are trees of righteousness, we must produce the fruits needed. The planting of the Lord. So the Lord expects certain fruits from certain fruits. If we are the vine, we should produce uh, good vines as well. Uh, fruits. So in continuation now, Mm, in continuation, uh, nah, check on your screen, is Sata. I saw 61 verses 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Have we not been also appointed? We have been anointed. The Spirit of the Lord, if it is upon us, we shall be our fruits. We shall never compromise. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. The Lord has sent us so that we can give up those to those who have been broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captive. We have been having trouble in the land whereby freedom which we enjoy. We are being bound together like what? Like vegetables, like uh, 
what food stuffs such like you cannot uh, breed like animals today uh, are going for breeding such kind of we have been sent to preach the good tidings onto the meek the Lord has sent us also to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty that is you set the people free to the captives but remember also there is a man who comes in these last days. The Bible questions us and even admonishes us that we should look upon the Antichrist who is to come. Even the spirit of the Antichrist in this last day. Whose spirit is that? Jesus Christ says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. There must also come in the last days a man who will say I am setting people free. The poor, the needy, I want to give them freedom and they will be sitting in the church of God. So he will also say the spirit of the Lord is upon. So he will come like a, a Christ in these last days. He will also say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am to preach the good tidings to the meek. But his spring is taking them where? He is actually taking them in bondage. The book of Second Peter, I believe, chapter 3 downwards, if not chapter 2, it says, um, While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. These are wells without waters. So why did they promise them liberty? There is a group of people in these last days who shall be preaching and proclaiming liberty while they are setting people to be captives. Look upon how things are becoming so much expensive in the land. What will come next? What happened in the time of Elijah, even the time of the prophets? Don't have time to consider that. The Lord was sent to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are repound. Verses 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He was to uh, proclaim the time appointed for the Lord to come and the day of vengeance of our God. So another thing is that he was to, uh, to declare the day of vengeance of our Lord. So there is a vengeance. And the Lord Jesus Christ preached at that time. He never spoke about the vengeance, the day of vengeance. But it was to proclaim in these last days, in the three angels' messages, the Bible says, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. So the day of vengeance has come as these things are happening. So these people who are sighing and crying for the abominations done in the land, they are the same kind of people who shall declare the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Who are these kind of people to be comforted? Those who mourn, those who sigh and cry for all the abominations which are being done in the land. So to appoint unto them that mourn is Zion. We have already considered that. Verse 4. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolation. And they shall repair the worst cities and the des desolation of many generations. These kind of people, they shall build the old uh, west. Those are the cities which were destroyed. Do you remember the case of Nehemiah? He went to repeal Jerusalem. To repeal Jerusalem means also to restore the commandments of the Lord. The book of uh, Psalms chapter 11 verse 3 says, uh, If the foundations be destroyed, what can, what can the righteous do? They will repeal the foundations. They will restore the commandments of the Lord. They will restore the Bible Sabbath. Not the Sabbath of men, not the spirit of the Antichrist, which is leading to the false Sabbath. So, they shall repeal the old West. They shall raise up the former desolations where the man has said as destroyed the antichrist is destroyed because Daniel chapter 8 verse 25 uh, even Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 uh, he says that the man was to come he shall think to change times and laws so they did change even the bible sabbath so a restoration is a very essential to repair the great cities the cities of refuge the peace we need in such a time uh, like this uh, on continuation uh, Let's consider on the screen on continuation just uh, uh, an overview. So we realize that the work Jesus Christ was doing, he was restoring, he was magnifying the law and making it honorable. Because we realized the time of the Jewish dispensation, the Pharisees had mingled the word of the Lord with traditions of men. They had given it every pardon. The clear word of God was misquoted, misused, and even the people never had the opportunity to hear the word of the Lord. They were thirsting for the true word of God. Even in such a time like this, the message must be given to the ends of the earth to prepare a people to stand before an holy God. Let's see. Isaiah 61 verse 3, we have said that uh, these are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, the, that he might be glorified in them. So elsewhere, the 
First Corinthians, I believe, chapter 10, verse 31, the Bible says, Whether therefore you eat or you drink or whatsoever things you do, uh, do it all for the glory of, of the Lord. Glorify God in your body, for it is not your own. For the Spirit of the Lord dwells in you, so that you can produce much fruits. Uh, they shall be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 32, you have said, this is the vine of the vine of Sodom and the fear of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of God. Their clusters are Peter. There is a group of people here who have their own rock whom they depend upon. These receive honor from men, not honor uh, unto God. Matthew 15, 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, no was thou that the Pharisees were offended, and they heard this saying, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall he root up. Why will the Lord God of heaven approve these plants? Because they are vines of Sodom, they are of fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are Peter. If it is Sodom which now these judges are advocating for in the land, he will uproot these plants when he comes the second time. Let the tears grow together with the wheat. 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall onto the ditch. Who is the vine? John 15 verse 1. And I am the vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. 15. 15 5. Huh? I am the vine, you are the branches, he that abided in me, and the word will be in us, and he in us. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So what about this vine of Sodom? These are strange figs, they are strange figs, they are strange vines. And they don't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They cannot be called the trees of righteousness. Every plant which my every father has not planted shall be uh, rooted up. Every plant. Uh -huh. Isaiah 24 verse 11. As people are crying for the Holy Spirit in these last days, uh, which is being presented as wine or so, the a representation of the Holy Spirit. A certain 12 verse 11 says what is happening generally in the land, there is a crying for wine in the streets. Why crying for the wine? What was happening in the streets? Just Christ in the book of uh, Isaiah 53, it is said he shall never cry in the streets. He shall be teaching the people. He had the Spirit of the Lord. He said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He was anointed with oil, with the Holy Spirit. So let's see. There is crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened in the land. The merit of the land is gone. Why? Because there is perversion of the truth in the land. It is a crooked and perverse generation turning the glory of the Lord into shame in the land. Whereby people are advocating for sodomy and so much more uh, in the land. So friends, as you can see or as you have heard is that a preparation is needed here that we share the true word of the Lord as it is as we have received it we should also share with those who have never had it let's see on the screen here check on your screen it says uh, these words news articles say fury of new laws move blue and the red states further apart fury of uh, it's actually fury of new uh, rose move blue and red uh, states further ahead. You know blue means stands for what? Obedience. Red means for danger. So there is a division here generally. Acts chapter 8 verse 23. Before I read Acts, uh, it says Romans chapter 3 verse 12. They are all gone out of the way. This is the church which has gone far away from the truth. The Bible tells me that in actually we are actually sharing the same pattern. It was prophesied the Antichrist was to come, who was to sit in the temple of God, calling himself that is God. The papacy is in actually in these last days. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. A falling away first from what? From the high estate we have been set as the light of the world. A falling away first. And uh, away, uh, falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of hell. Let's see. Romans chapter 3 verse 12. Uh, they are all gone out of the way. They are together. 
that is ecumenical coming, coming together of religions governments uh, one currency one religion uh, whatever they are all gone out of the way my bible tells me the book of proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 down was my son if they say cast up let's come together and shed blood do not join them Romans 3.12, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. No, not one. 13, their throat is an open sepulchre. Uh, with their tongues, they have used deceit. Their poison of acids is under their lips. So it's like the venom which we are the vine of Sodom. And also we add is the venom of acids so we find it also in the roman chapter 3 verse 12 which says uh, their throat that is in their mouth in their body is an open sepulchre with their thanks they have used the deceit the poison of acids is under their lips so who are they acting like like the devil who is the uh, old serpent described here 14 whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness so they cast the truth whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness question do you remember Baharam and Barak? There is a group of people, and these two people, one of them, uh, I believe it was Barak who was looking for Baharam to come and curse the children of Israel. So their mouth is full of cursing and the bitterness. Why are they full of cursing? There is a group of people in the land coming from Egypt who are heading to the promised land. They are very different. In the book of Esther chapter, Esther, chapter 3 verse 8, Naaman says these people, their laws are very different from the laws of the land. They are, they can never compromise the truth. 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. These people, uh, their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, like a thought of uh, uh, Barak was saying to Param, come and curse for me these people, for they are mighty and many. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Where does it take you? Proverbs 1, Proverbs 1, 10 to 13 where he said do not join them for they are quick to shed blood their feet are swift to shed blood this is ecumenical this is coming together of regions governments one currency if you would not join them like jesus christ said i will not join you i will do my father's business then you are in trouble like elijah like john the baptist he denounced the evil in the land the lord says the people who are going to be sealed in this last day they must be are sighing and crying warning the people of the abominations which are being done in the land like elijah the spirit of elijah is a, a spirit preparing the people to stand before an holy god 16 destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they no uh they uh and the way of peace have they not known what is the way of peace isaiah chapter 18 verse 19 if i remember very well it says uh, that the commandments of the Lord is the way of peace by obeying the commandments of the Lord. But here we have commandments and traditions of men. People say that even the Bible Sabbath was changed. That is a lie of the devil. Verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. What is the fear of the Lord? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 13. Here is the conclusion of the old matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the holy duty of man. For there there is no fear of God before their eyes. So they don't keep the commandments of God. Acts chapter 8 verse 23. For I perceive that thou art in the guard of bitterness and in the pond of iniquity. I perceive that thou art in the guard of bitterness how is he in the guard of bitterness this is a person who wanted to buy the holy spirit he came to uh, paul and even to peter uh, in that time he wanted to buy the holy spirit he wanted to do like they were doing but he had no calling so we must have a person in these last days who is having a cursing and a bitterness he doesn't have any connection with jesus christ he just wants to unite the whole universe unto himself, not for the glory of God. No, he wants to do away with the truth. For I perceive indeed that thou, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> thou art in, art in the guard of bitterness and in the pond of iniquity. Of sin, Romans chapter eight, uh, ch chapter 3 verse 14, we are ready dealt with that one, which says, Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Evasion 4, that one, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and the clamor and the evil speaking be put away from you 
with all malice. Who is this with evil speaking? Psalms 140 verse 11, the Bible says, Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall he and the violent man to overthrow him. Is an evil speaker, is an evil time. We should redeem the time, knowing the time is evil. Isaiah 14 29, For out of the serpent this root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery frying serpent. Out of the root of the devil this is you know jesus christ is known as the root and the branch of david but there is another one here there is another one a counterfeit here a counterfeit root serpent this root uh, which is to come and the interrupter end is to ash out truth from the land liberty and it will happen as it happened in the dark ages uh in the continuation uh, as we look there in uh, we want to consider as we look uh, there in. <coughs> I want to try to go faster because time is not on my side. News article <coughs> from NPR News: LGBTQ groups sue Florida over the so-called "Don't Say Gay" law. So it has come to a time whereby you cannot say that against the gay sim, sodomy, the land, homosexuality, lesbianism, all these confusions, you cannot speak anything about it. You cannot use the scriptures against them. Why? You will be jailed. There is an, uh, a member of parliament here who was jailed. I will share with you in just a moment. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sought these children. And they have none understanding. They have none understanding. They are foolish. They are sought these children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. So there is a combination here. But remember who about this. It is a connection between uh, culture. The issue of Pope Francis in such a time like this, he says, we want to unite all religions, all governments. Uh, we have one currency, we have one government, one army, so that we can move just together. What is the aim of all this? We cancel all cultures which are against us. Even in our lands, you see everywhere they say it is an evil culture. We cannot go against. Uh, we cannot go. We cannot actually cooperate with this. It just looks good, eh? but what is the end result of uh, all this? Is to ash out truth from of the land. Let's see. So it is between the word of God and the word which comes from the mouth of Pope Francis. Let's see, not my own words, you can just find uh, Google uh, the word of God and uh, you can understand just what it says. This is in the websites. Pope's word versus Jesus Christ's word, the word of God. Choose now. Let's see this from NPR news article and also second place uh, we will check out here uh, is that uh, just on your screen as we consider there on uh it says uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6 okay you know the problem here what you are just seeing on the screen they said you cannot use the word gay and also they said that they are going to take these uh messages to the schools to teach children that so that they can understand there is another agendas which have come to the society they are now going to teach people uh now you are not going to say call this marriage no so even uh, in gay sim uh lesbianism or this lgbtq uh whatsoever they are also calling it is a marriage a kind of marriage but it's not the marriage god instituted in the very beginning the book of proverbs chapter 30 verse 14 there is a generation who sit are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men who is the poor? Who is the needy? Who is the poor? Who is the needy? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall do what? I believe it finishes, they shall see God. Okay, these are those people who know God, who have uh, a connection with uh, the Lord God of heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. What are we supposed to teach the children? Is these messages they are giving to the people what God is advo advocating for? No. Deuteronomy 6, 6. The Lord says, Thou shalt teach them diligently the children co what he had commanded them, so they were supposed to teach them the children. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them 
that those are the commandments of God. Talk of those commandments when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest, liest down, and when thou risest up. These commandments should be like your song as you sleep, when you awake, every time you read them to your children. This is the book of the law. But in our time, people say, you know, the book of Saul Moses was they no longer have effects so that violence is in the land evil um tala tala ase fra says gay rights advocates sued florida governor the florida governor ronald de santis on thursday to block a new law that forbids classroom instruction on sexual orientations and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade the law has catapulated Florida and the Santis, a potential 2024 Republican presidential candidate to the forefront of the country's culture was. So, but what is the message of Pope Francis? A dialogue between the religions, a dialogue between carriages, so that we can accommodate them all. Don't say gayism, don't say homosexuality, don't say lesbianism. These are children of God and they shall enter heaven. That is our, as he says. But say, here is a forefront of a culture wars, so-called. The world has been molded through movies, music, and all forms to advocate for this. They said, like, you know, water can remain. If you set a, a, what, a kind of a water in a patient, if you don't disturb it the way it is, it remains as it is. And uh, even the, our courageous, if you do not disturb those people, if you do not steer them, you know, even in the politicians, when they are against another opponent, they steer the people against another opponent. So, if these people with their own courageous, if you leave them as they are, they will remain just as they are unless you disturb them. So, who is steering the others? Let's see. Amos chapter 3 verse 10. Mm, okay, before I read that one, it says, critics call it the don't say gay law and argue that it is true. Intent is to marginalize LGBTQ people and their families. So these people are a family. This is what Pope Francis has been using ever and ever, saying we are a family. You know, nowadays, even he calls rocks and waters and uh, all everything surrounding us, we are, it is a family. So we are connected. He says we are connected. This is nature worship, my friend. Is in nature worship as it was in the day of uh, Elijah, so that we are in interconnected. That's why people worship idols and they say we are what venerating over it. Amos chapter 3 verse 10 For they know not to do right, says the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. How did they rob God? How did the Paranapas rob God the glory? He was uh, actually was uh, uh, acquitted while Jesus Christ was done what. He was taken to the cross. He had robbery. They chose uh, Paranapas other than using Jesus Christ. It is also the same uh, time which we are. Who shall people choose? Will they choose man who is leading the world? Or will they choose the Lord Jesus Christ or even the God of heaven and earth, the creator of heaven and earth? So they don't know how to do right. So when you advocate about gayism, is this the foundation of America? Is it right? Is this right? You know the principle of the U.S. Constitution is not over power. It is over what is right to do. Is it right? Oh, America, is it right before your eyes? Also, an another news article here, it says, uh, uh, Fox News, teacher running for Congress warns over psychological damage this needs LGBTQ agenda may do to kids. So even through movies Disney, they are teaching children, they are using all means to teach children. Is it also not Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, the teacher has warned. But there is also another great teacher who is warning the same. He said in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6, teach my children these laws. When they wake up, when they sleep, remind them the commandments of the Lord, how they dress, how they live as a people, the book of the law of Moses. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 4, Daniel says, remember yet the law of Moses, my servant, which the Lord gave him in, in Mount what? Uh, in Mount Horeb or in Mount Sinai. It's also a remembrance in these last days. That is, we have covered before, it's the song of Moses and the Lamb. And we saw that uh, the song, 
are the statutes of God. In the book of Psalms, he says these statutes are the songs of the Lord to be sung in the morning, the evening, everywhere you go, you meditate upon them. And the Lord shall give us strength to obey them or to do them. Also, Gina Siasila, Siasia, uh, a former teacher running for Congress in Virginia, called the World Disney Company's opposition to a Florida parental rights bill, appealing and the wound of the psychological damage that teachers can do to young children by teaching them about sexuality to area. So they want to amold them. You know, a child you can do with him anything you want to do with him where he, or him or her where she is uh, still a child. So they want you uh, to indo indoctrin uh, actually to give this kind of children uh, false doctrines. So that they cannot call them gay now. They are giving them other words. You don't call them gay. They are introducing other genders under this issue of sexual orientation. So you know orientation is when you introduce somebody to something new or in to a new perspective, or something new to somebody about gender identity as they are giving to children. What is this? Are we going to trust these schools any longer these last days? Are we not going to have homeschooling in these last days? Yes, quickly. It is coming to such a time like that. The Lord says to the mothers, teach my children my law. Let's see. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs don't say gay pill into law. Measure pass teaching about sexual orientation and gender identity from kindergarten from third grade. Guardian staff and agencies. Matthew 23, 23. You serpents, you generational vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Isaiah 59 verse 5. They arch cockatrice eggs and they weave the spider's web. So what kind of children are they bringing to the world? If they teach them about sexual orientation and uh, uh, gender identity. And this is evil. It's evil in its principle. It is evil. What kind of children are they bringing to the world? Isaiah 59 verse 5 says they are arching children who we call, shall call evil. Elijah was here, he would say, you generation of vipers. Generation of vipers, let's see if it is in Isaiah 59 verse 5. They arch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. You know a spider's web is a kind of ecumenical coming together. A web can attract everything, anything. Putting it together is a web. It's a network of uh, coming together. So, he that heated of their eggs dies. And that which is crushed, uh, uh, break it out into a viper. Those which are aged, they become like a the serpent like the devil himself and those who eat these eggs who eat these doctrines who eat from them from the dragon we say that those are venom from the dragon they die they are a damnation damned to hell let's see on another news article here on another news article generally uh let's see let's see what i'm generally saying is uh, it's also found in the book of revelation chapter Revelation chapter 17 verse 5, uh, there is a woman spoken there in who is known as uh, a matter of arrows. So a matter, the Bible also somewhere says as the matter is, so is the daughter. So as the children are, so their parents must be so. What you teach them is what they shall be. When these people grow, they become like their mother. If it's um, uh, uh, children, they are like their mother or like their parents. So it's a doctrine, a proverbs, and also like a principle uh, for us to understand where we are. Shall we be faithful when we shall be weighed in the parents? Shall we be found worthy in such a time like this? Um, we have covered this one when we are saying this last day that liberty of conscience is at stake. Liberty of conscience which has caused so great a sacrifice will no longer be respected in this last days. From the book, The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan, page 592, Isaiah 59 verse 5, we have already dealt that one. Another news article says, uh, Boris Johnson back tracks over LGBTQ conversion practices, pan after back, back clash. So, uh, Boris Johnson is proking any means which can be used to convert these people to Christianity. It's uh, banning every form of conversion practices. To ban, you cannot preach to these people. This is what Russia did in around 2017. You cannot preach to this group of people. No, you can't. Liberty of concerns, which are so 
has caused so great a sacrifice will no longer be respected we no longer be respected let's see christian condemnation of lgbt not hate speech in finland court rules a politician who tweeted romans chapter 1 verse 24 to 27 and a bishop who published a pamphlet win unanimous decision how long would do you think it's going to continue any so far things are going to change things are going to change because people are drinking from one cup jeremiah chapter 9 verse 3, verse 3 and they paid their tongue like the poor uh, for lies but they are not variant for the truth upon the earth for they proceed from evil to evil and they know not me says the lord these people as you see they are going to paint these truths to lies very soon it is going to increase from worst to worst the bible says so and also it will proceed from evil to evil they are not variant for the truth upon the earth and they know not me who is this they don't know the bible says in the book of john chapter 17 verse 3 and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent they know not the lord they know not the god of heaven even jesus christ whom the lord sends they know not the lord if they knew him if they knew the example he gave to sodom and gomorrah for those who disobeyed him they could not follow this path whereby truth now to speak truth in these last days you speak it out of fear because of uh, dress reform of how people wear my dress my choice it's a uh, an faithful so be variant for the truth and uh, advocate for the truth as the lord leave it thank you we shall be coming for party two uh, if it be possible let's see actually what i want to do is that uh, okay let me wind up with this so that i can come with part two tomorrow or the other day it's just say something news article uh kenya news the star ruto is take on the safety of lgbtq community in kenya ruto said everyone should respect the law no one should be harassed this is from the kenya news 9th august 2022 uh okay okay not that one thanks august is for direction day sorry for that i forgot to delete that one uh ruto is take on the safety of lgbtq community in kenya ruto said everyone should respect the law no one should be harassed yes that's brotherhood you have your own points no one should be harassing you but you should be spoken to R jeremiah 5 1 run here to and fro through the streets of jerusalem and the sea now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man if there be any that executed judgment that seeketh the truth and i will pardon it so the lord wanted to bring judgment upon the jerusalem at this that city like in the god is about to bring judgment in the papal the great city of the world in such a time like this the agencies of evil the agencies which will unite against truth and righteousness in this context are now actively at work the great controversy uh chapter 36 this we have been seeing movements of war leaders coming together they are bringing peace but we shall see the end results of it all for the prophecy is speaking loud and clear in such a time uh, like this in such a time uh, like this so also on a continuation we see deputy president william ruto has been firm on his stand as a christian this is the kenyan deputy president uh william ruto has been firm on his stand as a christian when it comes to lgbtq community in kenya 
in 201 ruto said before the church okay in 201 i don't know which time it sits or which year it is just quoted in 201 ruto said uh, before the church that there is no room for homosexuality in the country and that kenya is a god fearing nation second corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 and what concord has christ with Belial? or what part has he that believed with an infidel okay we shall consider this there on uh, later on but meanwhile let's go in a quick way because i see almost one hour here i want to accomplish this in a quick way let's see almost chapter 4 verse 11 i have okay faith leaders they support homosexuality faith leaders unite to support homosexuality what does the bible say about homosexuality a question they ask Amos chapter 4, 4 verse 11 I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and you were as a firebrand plucked out of the panning yet have you not returned unto me says the Lord the Lord separated his own people like a firebrand which he took out of fire to save it but these people uh, they have done more than Sodom and Gomorrah what will the Lord do with them the question they're asking what does the bible say about homosexuality you have already covered it that this is the wine of papron by day there is something we are going to cover that this gayism is being brought or agitated by one thing which is uh, uh, uh images idols they are greatest snares which draw people people have in their streets they have a uh, gayism uh, all, all kind of statues on the way these things they have a uh, as they are as near Jude 1 7 even as Sodom and Gomorrah and their cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh strange flesh and set forth for an example suffering the vagency of eternal fire so Sodom and Gomorrah was an example it was set for an example for this last days an example about the vagency of the lord isaiah 61 verse 1 the spirit of the lord is upon me the lord Jesus christ said he was appointed because the spirit of the lord was upon him he came to preach good tidings remember also the spirit of the lord was grieved with the, in the time of noon it was uh, grieved the lord says my uh good notes uh condone this for so long so the spirit of the lord was departing from the world my spirit would not always strive with men for they are flesh he said so they went after strange flesh so let's see the spirit of the lord is upon me jesus said he has pro he was sent to preach good tidings he was also sent to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives so captives to sodomy no to bring people to the lord jesus christ to turn them not to save them in sin so that they can be saved to depart from sin and be saved and the opening of the prison to them that are upon so it was also to pre proclaim the acceptable year of the lord is coming and also to proclaim the day of vengeance of our god this is our work today to say that judgments come and also to comfort all that mourn those who are sighing and crying for the abomination who are done in the land should be uh, comforted in such a time like this uh, the spirit of the lord is uh, is uh actually it says uh, the days in which we live are solemn and abundant the spirit of the lord is gradually but surely being drawn from the earth testimony to the child of verse 9 page 11 uh, uh page 11 let's see uh here on your screen it says uh, literally chapter 8 verse 10 before i read that one at the heart of the claim that the bible is at the heart of the claim this uh, pastors, evangelicals, they are saying at the heart of the claim that the Bible is clear that homosexuality is forbidden by God is poor biblical scholarship and a cultural pious read in the Bible. So these pastors are saying if you are using the Bible to denounce homosexuality, you are wrong. So he says this those are poor uh, biblical scholarship and a cultural pious against the homosexuals. So do you see where we are? do you see the world which we are in the future or very soon you will not be able to speak about the truth in the land you will not be able to speak you will be stalled keep quiet like elijah he was sought for let's see what does the bible say about homosexuality okay jeremiah chapter 5 verse 28 they are works and fat they shine yeah they overpass the deeds of uh, 
the wicked, they judge not the cause, the cause of the fathers, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy, do they not judge? Deuteronomy 8.10 When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt uh, bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. America, when it was, uh, was growing, it was very jealous for the truth, even for the word of the Lord. But now it has grown to a mighty nation like Papron, which was under Nebuchadnezzar. Now it's speaking like Nebuchadnezzar. Is this not the great Papron which I have made? So they are against God. Deuteronomy 8 verse 11, they don't want to stand for the right. Deuteronomy 8 verse 11, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in in not keeping his commandments and his judgment and his statutes which I command you this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast pure good houses and dwell therein, and when thy heads and thy frogs multiply and thy silver and thy gold multiply and all that thou hast in the uh, smart pride, then thy heart be lifted up like Nebuchadnezzar, then thy heart be lifted up because you are now full, you have grown developed nations, now not growing nations or developed nations, but developed nations. Then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Have, no, have they not forgotten the one who has brought them this far? Now they are uniting for evil purposes. They are uniting for evil purposes. Let's see on the news article here, it says, from the independent news article, if you are using the Bible to condemn being gay, you are reading it wrong. Our current conception of sexual identity are modern constructions that simply didn't exist when the biblical texts were written. You see, these are men of uh, devils. This is from January 22nd, uh, Monday 24th, uh, by Cathy Edwards. Says uh, those words which you have heard. When the leading judges of the United States of America, uniting upon a when the leading judges of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, in racism, <laughs> shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America would have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy, and the infliction of civil penalties and upon dissenters will inevitably result from Maranatha, page 195. This union, as they united in the time of Jesus Christ, the Pharisees, Sadducees, Herod, and, uh, and such a time they united to crush Jesus out of the earth. So they will do in these last days. If they have done this to Jesus, they will also do to you because you will stand for the truth. Unless you compromise, deny Jesus. From uh, France 24 news, it says Finnish ex, uh, Finnish ex minister in court over and gay Bible tweets. You see? Uh huh. Or you see where we are heading to? Will they be protected? Whose doctrine is this? The vine of Sodom. The wine which is being carried by that woman, that false pride of revelation. Those false doctrines of cancel culture, unite our religions. This is the mouth of the papacy. Not my own words. He has done it. He has uh, gotten this to be done. Uh, Eriski uh, continues to say, a Christian Democrat MP said Monday she is defending freedom of speech and religion on the first day of her hate speech trial in Finland over social media posts condemning homosexuality. Remember the agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating their strengthening, strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world and the final movements will be rapid ones. This is the final movement, like you say. If it's Moses who was being called, go and bring my people out of Egypt. God is also calling in these last days, go bring my people out of Egypt. He's also even sending Elijah, turn them to me. He will send Elijah who will turn their hearts to the Lord. He says, remember yet the law of Moses. Return them now to God's commandments, to the path which he has ordained. The God's law will be made void. The word of God plainly declares that his law is to be scorned trampled underfoot by the world, there would be an extraordinary preference of iniquity, preparing for the final crisis which we are heading to very quickly in such a time uh, like this, in such a time like this. My brother be faithful, my sister be faithful. And the news article says, dialogue between religi religions essential, says Pope on the first day of our African visit. Preaching divisions between Muslims and Christians is his main theme of Pontivistry 
uh, nation tour of our continent. Seems like it's peace. Is it peace? What's the agenda? We shall see what happened in the dark ages or in the time past. We shall consider history. Direct between the regions, essential culture, says pop on first day on African visit. Psalms chapter 140 verse 11. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Who is this evil speaker? Evil shall be unto violent man to overthrow him. Proverbs 28 verse 16. There is a prince here. Who is the prince of peace by day? It is Jesus Christ. But there is another prince. Proverbs 28 verse 16. The prince that wanted understanding. Compromise. Middle ground. Understanding. Middle ground. Middle ground. Do not preach your own truth. Let's agree. Let's have a middle ground. Cast out your truth for the for peace's sake. The prince that wanted understanding is also a great oppressor. This same person is the one who has shed much blood in the dark ages. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 17 verse 5 and 6 that this church is guilty of shedding a lot of blood in the dark ages. Are this another crusade scanning? Let's see. The prince that wanted understanding is also a great oppressor. But he that hated covetousness shall prolong his days. We live in the times of the end. This is from the Guardian a news article. As you can see, uh, there on. I want to rush by very quickly to see how quick you can cover this. How quick you can cover this in 10 minutes' time. It says here um, from Nigeria's news article from the Vatican Theologian in dialogue with courageous renews humanity. Paul France says, Theologian in dialogue with courageous. What is this theology? So, Theology is the study of what? About God. Eh? In a dialogue with cultures, renews humanity. Pope Francis says, this is the study about God. So, study about God needs now a dialogue. Let's see. With cultures, renews humanity. Pope Francis says, Psalms, Isaiah 26 verse 9, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. How is it the night? What happens in the night? Jesus Christ said, I must work where it is day. The night cometh, when you shall not be able to work, there is a time here, a night and night which is coming. We shall not be able to work. Isaiah 26 verse 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me will I seek the area. So those who will seek the Lord before the night will be saved. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. There is trouble, earthquakes, and diverse things happen in the world. But what do they do? They come together. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, verses 15 and 16, They shall sure be gathered together, but not by me. They are gathering together, but not to Jesus, not to God, the God of heaven. They shall sure be gathered together, but not by me. Whosoever shall be gathered against thee shall fall for thy sake. See, Matthew 11, 29, Take my yoke upon you. And the land of me, I desire thee in the night. So the Bible says, when the judgment of the earth, uh, of the uh, judgment of the Lord are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. They will learn about the righteousness of Jesus Christ, even of, even obeying the commandments of the Lord. If you learn about Jesus Christ, you keep His commandments. John fourteen fifteen. If you love me, keep my commandments. The book of Psalms one nineteen verse fifty five. I remember thy name, O Lord, in the night, and I have kept thy law. But here. We have traditions of men, which people are saying, remember our traditions. So, theology, in a dialogue with cultures, these are the traditions. So, we want traditions to be respected, to be incorporated. Do away with the scriptures. Now, we want a dialogue with cultures, with other religions, with other governments, with soever, one currency, one, 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 one. If you don't unite with us like Jesus, you will not be part of us. We will crucify you. You are a trapper of the people. Let's see. Um, here is a document from Catholic, uh, uh, from Catholic uh, Erand, uh, September 1st, 1983. Ontario says, the mark of the Papa's is authority. Sunday is our mark of authority. The Roman Church is above the Bible, and this transference of the Bible, uh, Sabbath, Observance is proof of that fact. Is that so? Is the church above God, even above the people, to change the people? That's what is generally happening in our time. People are trying to change every sentiment of truth from the people. You will wonder what kind of people, people who are supporting gays and sodom and the are using. Not the true people, the King James sword, no, traditions of men, friends. These are traditions like uh, they are supporting it in such a time like this they are referring to land of me 
learn of me. I remember thy name, the name of Jesus is law in the night, and I've kept thy commandments. Let's see. Um, uh, Proverbs 25 verse 6 Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king. Do not be hasty to put thyself in the presence of the king, even the king of kings. Understand not in the presence of the great men. Do not be hasty to stand even before the great men. Who is this? Who is standing in the presence of the king? Who is the king of kings than, than Jesus? Who is this ready to stand before the place of the great men? For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up, Ita, than thou should be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thy eyes have seen. There is a man here who is standing and even calling himself that God, above the prince of princes, above the king of kings. Then he ate then, and it works great. That is the literal on. Huh? The literal on works great. And even to the host of heaven. And it cast okay, actually this is a, a, it's a piece here, and not specific which one. It works great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground. These are the great men. The stars are messengers, they are angels. He cast them to the earth. He cast also the host of heaven. The host of heaven is just cast the host of heaven. Huh? It works great. It became like God. So friends. Uh, those who work, walk in pride, who are lifting themselves to high seats, high thrones, they shall be brought low. Shall be brought low. So, they shall be brought low. Be humble like Jesus Christ, and you shall receive to enter that kingdom, to stand upon that uh, kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see. When theology and philosophy engage with cultures in creative ways, they become a powerful tool for renewing humanity with the word of God. Pope Francis said Saturday during the awarding of the 2019 Lazinga Prize. Let's listen to this. If you indeed if you cannot use the Bible, you cannot know that what these men are saying. When theology and the philosophy, so the word of God, you unite with the philosophy of the world, logic, traditions of men. Is that so? Theology united with philosophy, engaged with culture, so middle ground in creative ways, creative ways, they become a powerful tool. What is the powerful tool we have been given? The word of God is a sword, a powerful tool for renewing humanity to make them perfect uh -huh, with the word of God. How is that so? You mix the word of God with philosophy, Pope Francis said on Saturday. But what is the word? What is the sword? Theology. What is the Bible saying about philosophy? The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, Be aware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. F vain deceit? After the traditions of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. This is the foreign Messiah. This is the false Messiah, the counterfeit Messiah. John 4.34 Jesus said unto them, My meat is not to my meat is uh, to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. To finish his work. The work of the Lord is to share the gospel. The second Thessalonians 2 verse 9. Who is this? Even him who is coming is after the working of Satan with all power and the signs and lying wonders. So he's coming after the working of Satan. But Jesus Christ was doing the will of his father to finish his work, sharing the gospel, the word. But who is this? What is he sharing? What is this power generally? The, the working of Satan with all power. What is power? We said it is the gospel, it's the word of God. But what is the Pope saying? Theology, that is the word of God, united with philosophy, teachings of the world, learned great men of the earth. Is that so? This is true for all characters. Access to redemption for humanity in all of its dimension should be sought with creativity and imagination. Imagination? What it destroyed so, uh, the time of Nu? The Bible says the Lord saw that every imagination, their imaginations was evil continually. And what is the Bible saying here generally? Evil imaginations. This is true for all characters. Unite them. Redeem them. With their philosophy, you unite with the word of God. Then you convert them to the church. You convert them with their philosophy to the church. Is that what the Lord has told us to do? No, friends. This is the truth which is needed in such a time like this. When truth has been cast to the ground. Culture, dialogue, religion, and the truth in fraternity. What is this fraternity? It's purpose writings. 
he just calls them his pipes, scriptures, uh, letters to uh, like letters from Paul to the churches, uh, culture, dialogue, religion, and the truth in fraternity. So, fraternity is now the religion, is now the truth in this time. What is truth? Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. But now the people is saying, no, we need culture, philosophy, together with theology. We convert the world, unite them with their courages. Culture, dialogue, religion, truth, in fraternity. Essential universal truth claims of Christianity are missing in Pope Francis' is new and cyclical writings. That is why he calls himself Pope Francis a man of his own word. But who is the word? Jesus Christ is the word. You cannot unite Jesus with the world. No. He came to the world to save the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, whosoever believeth in him shall never perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. See, Genesis 6 verse 25. These are evil imaginations. And God saw that the wickedness, wickedness, wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his earth was only evil continued. Imaginations of his earth this is I thinking, philosophy, logics, psychology, I learning of men. Hmm? Every imagination thoughts uh, were evil. It's now what the, the Pope has been using to teach people evolution, that evolution and Christianity or, uh, and creation are both right. Let's see, Genesis 6 verse 2, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The sons of God are the children of, uh, of uh, Seth. You know Adam was called as a son of God. Like Jesus Christ is called the son of God. Because Jesus took the position which Adam failed. To redeem us. To restore us back to Eden. The lifestyle of Eden. Let's see. The sons of God. The sons of Seth saw that the children of Cain who repelled were good. And they saw it first they were to marry them. That was not what God is order. God separated them. There was a separation wall. They cannot mingle. Truth can never unite with the darkness. Th this is what we are seeing in these last days. Evil and only evil continually increasing in the land. What shall we do? We need to point the people to the truth, to the truth, to the truth, uh, as the Lord leave it. So Pope Francis says creating a culture of encounter is needed in such a time like this. So we need to create a culture of a encounter. A culture of encounter. Do you know what the culture of encounter is? Casting away your truth and accepting other people's truth. You reason together. You make a middle ground. You do away. unto you in word only but also in power so the gospel is power this gospel is able to convert it is power it is the gospel i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god unto salvation it is this gospel which will convert what not theology that is the word of god plus philosophy no these those are rudiments of the world for this our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in the power. What is the power? The Spirit of the Lord. And in the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance as you know that manner of men we were among you for your sake. This power of the Holy Spirit united with the word of God. This is power indeed. It's the true power. Not what the Pope says that theology and philosophy engage with cultures in creative ways. They become a powerful tool. The powerful tool we have ever known is the word of God. For the word of the Lord is quick. Powerful, quick, this quick friends are uh, cutting even the two edges. That is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4. It's also able to discern the intents of the earth or of the marrow. So, it's 
Spop says the cure and philosophy engage with courageous and great ways. They become a powerful tool for renewing humanity with the word of God. Renewing humanity with the word of God. How can we renew humanity with the word of God? With uniting philosophy and theology? No, friends. It is only with the word of God. Sora, scriptura, the Bible and the Bible alone. Uh huh. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Second Timothy chapter three verse fifteen. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able, able to make thee wise unto salvation. So it is the scriptures which are able to make us wise unto salvation from a child. Now I am no longer a child. I have grown. I have mature. I have known. I am no longer a child. I know the truth. It has made me wise. When you are wise, you are whole. You are whole in the truth. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Not the philosophy, not the theology for renewing humanity. No, it is for the word of God which is able for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The path to take unto salvation. Unto salvation, friends. 17. That the man of God may be perfect, which is Papa is saying, he is renewing humanity with the word of God to become a powerful tool for what? Renewing humanity. Mm. This is true for all characters. Access to redemption for humanity. How can man be redeemed? To access to redemption of humanity, to redeem man, to make him perfect, is by the word of God. Tara refunded unto all goods, well, is by the word of God. In or this dimension should be sought with creativity and imagination. No, no thing like creativity and imagination with the word of God. It is the word Sora Scriptura. That the man of God may be perfect. That I furnish it unto all good works. Why the word of God? In the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word was spoken. It spoke and it happened. That is the word which is able to make us whole. Man cannot live by bread alone. But by every word. Not philosophy but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god friends if you cannot use scriptures you cannot understand this mouth of uh, the antichrist or of the men of the world who have departed from the faith which was once delivered unto the saints friends is the time of the end you need to be ready Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 but thou but thou we are an angel from heaven. Preach another gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Who is this to be accursed? Preaching another gospel. Other than the gospel of uh, the scriptures. Other than the third says the Lord. Let's see. Is the man of sin saying that theology and the philosophy can engage courageous in creative ways. It seems sweet. That is how the devil came in the garden of Eden. Did the Lord say? Did God say? No, you shall not surely die. You shall not surely die. This is the same. You can unite them. You could not die. Just mix them. The Lord said eat this one. But you can also eat this one which he said no. You could be fine. You could be very wise like God. You would be like God. It's the same crossing uh, landmarks or of, uh, deception. It is a deceit. These are venoms of the uh, and acids of uh, the serpent, the serpent, it is last. We began with the voice of the serpent, and here you see indeed the voice of the serpent. Cure you with the philosophy. You engage them. The devil came in the beginning, he wanted a dialogue. A dialogue. He dethroned our first parents, and now he's doing the same thing to make that when probation will cross, we will not be saved. Brethren, be ready. Be ready. Because this deception, as you have had, as you have seen, these doctrines have ever been from the beginning. And these deceptions, as it was in the Garden of Eden, now it is. It is, And we need to live by the word of God. Do not turn to the right, nor to the left. Be faithful, uh, my brethren. Be faithful, my brother. Uh, be faithful, my brethren. In such a case, be accounted worthy to enter that city which is to come. Be faithful, uh, call upon the Lord, and He will redeem us, He will save us, He will direct us to the path or the course to take as God's people. So thank you so much. Uh, let's see on this article here, just as we wind up, it has taken a lot of uh, time, 
but it is of great importance to understand why is Pope Francis so zealous for gayism, lesbianism, and such like LGBTQ. Very zealous for them to protect them. Cancel cultures which are against others. Those who say they possess the truth, they should not be among the people. That is the same voice which Amman said. There is a people in the land whose laws are very diverse from the laws of the land. So, friends, you have covered that one. Even an angel. Even if an angel comes from heaven, do you remember who is equated as an angel who comes from heaven? The messenger from heaven. Generally, an angel does not generally mean that it's a, an heaven created being. No, not only that one. Huh? An angel means a messenger. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, Jesus Christ is the messenger of the covenant. He was sent a messenger of the covenant, even the Lord of the covenant, the messenger of the covenant. He came. He came, friends. That is Malachi chapter 3. He came the messenger of the covenant. So here is another counterfeit angel. You know, the one who came in the panning bush was Jesus Christ. He commanded Moses and said, Go, bring my people out of Egypt. He was with them all the way. If you read the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you would realize that this is the rock which was with them. And it's the rock which gave water from the rock, from himself, for the people to drink. Let's see. Um... Even if an angel comes from heaven giving a different message than what we have heard, let him be a cousin. There is another counterfeit messenger calling himself that he is God and is sitting in the temple of God and is calling himself that he is God. This one is the papacy. Let the world captive, deceive the world and leading them uh, quickly to perdition. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Okay, there is, before I read that one, he quoted the six thesis apostolic exhortation evangelii into all the strata of humanity ah, it seems sweeter huh? and through this inference transforming humanity from within and make it new you transform humanity from within by what this is high thinking this is philosophy and this is logics this is psychology high thinking we call it high thinking. The devil said, uh, "I will bring the high thinking, and you know it is effects. You shall know it. You must be clear with the word of the Lord to understand these things. Uh, it is a duty for theology to be and remain in active dialogue with its cultures, even as they change over time. So these cultures are changing. These cultures are evolving differently in the various parts of the world." He said. It's a condition necessary for the vitality of Christian faith, for the church's mission of evangelization. These cultures are changing. And these cultures is the which the Pope is saying you need to unite, learning them, uniting them. They are changing. But the culture of heaven does not change. Hebrews 13 verses 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Jesus is the word. And th the beginning was the word. It does not change. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. What we have heard from the beginning does not change. The message, manner, how it was being taught in the time past, it is the manner it shall be taught even to the end of the age. The Bible says in the book of uh, 1 John 2, 4, 2 and 4, Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. This is what you have heard from the beginning, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. But this say, uh, these are saying, you know, it's a dialogue with thin courageous and religions. So these religions and courageous, they are changing, but the word of God does not change. How can you say a dialogue? This is Barak of this time saying to Baram, come and cast for me these people. They don't want to have a dialogue with me. You know, they are strong for me strong and greater than me they are going to overwhelm me why do you fear my luck chapter 3 verse 6 for i am the lord i change not therefore you sons of jacob are not consumed the lord god of heaven does not change his message does not change what has gone out of the mouth of god does not change i love that book of numbers which says sir uh, the lord does not change he can his message does not change it can never change the message of salvation in every generation. God is dealing with men is ever the same. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible says, That thing which was past is the same which shall be. Is there anything 
which you shall say this is new it has ever been it, there is no new thing out of the sun Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 i paraphrase it generally you can go and consider uh consider it learn even the character taught by jesus christ friends not this courage of men uh therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught the traditions not the courage of this world the traditions which you have been taught whether by word or a piece of the word of god which is inspired by god we should hold fast and testify the word of god friends stand fast and hold the tradition you have been taught second testament chapter 2 verses uh, 15. so generally you have seen how this issue of council culture council religions let's unite where it is heading to it is evil evil and evil continually <laughs> uh pope francis continued to say all the arts and disciplines francis said thus cooperate in contributing to the full growth of the human person what is this able to make us full growth of a person how this how can a person grow i was a child now i am an adult inspiring the word of god we have covered it second Thessalonians chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 verse 17 that the man of god through this all, all scripture inspired may be perfect thoroughly furnished truly furnished unto all good works not this what the Bible thinks all the arts and disciplines these are the philosophies and teachings of the word arts and disciplines faculties they can make a man have they saved any if you can see moralities increasing in the land yet we have high philosophers in the land people have uh, several degrees and they are the same people who are committed they are the same who are killing they destroy other people he started learning moses learned the knowledge of egypt he destroyed somebody but the knowledge of heaven he says do not kill you can understand these things as they go the full growth of the human person is by the word of god you grow you will grow you were a child paulo says i was a child sometimes back i was persecuting the church of god when because i was a child when moses was a child when moses became whole he actually denounced egypt he said it's better to be with god's people i be persecuted i be elsewhere in the wilderness rather than being with these things of the world oh friends choose wisely the love of god uh-huh so friends you have seen how deception is in the land how deception is in the land i'm remaining with three documents here he says sir uh, on your screen pop asks for dialogue between faith and culture without aggression hmm middle ground you don't want aggression who steers the people how is it that people have remained in peaceful since uh, america came into power in 1776 and other times back people have lived in peace in harmony who is this acting like barak disturbing god's people when they are preparing to enter the heavenly canon what is here when you say without aggression you are saying do not preach the truth Oh Elijah, oh John the Baptist, he said to Herodias, Herod, you are marrying Herodias, I uh, think the issue of Herodias is quite, said you are doing evil, this is ev an evil union, so you cannot speak that one. We need no aggression, you need not sp speak the truth. Okay, friends, the Pope said uh, during his catechesis, he reflected on a particular scene from St. Paul's travels. He's preaching in Athens, the art of Greece and the culture of that time pope francis stressed how saint paul knew how to communicate the faith of the greeks uh -huh. Uh -huh. let's see uh -huh. he knew how to speak the word of the greeks so what followed then um pope francis would co continue to say the contact with paganism does not scare him instead it pushes him to create a bridge to dialogue with the culture like paul in an extra extraordinary example of in incarceration uh -huh. he announces uh, Christ based on their faith in a known God to whom they are pure and idol so the great adversary friends uh, this is from the great controversy page 43 paragraph 1 the great adversary now endeavored to gain by advice what he failed to secure by force you know force is the last resort of the devil persecution ceased and in this state was substituted the dangerous allurements of temporal prosperity and the worldly honor 
idolaters were led to receive a part of the Christian faith. Why it is rejected at the essential truths? At the essential truths is what we call dialogue. You reject what? At the essential truths. <laughs> For dialogue. <laughs> they profess to accept Jesus as the Son of God and to believe in his death and resurrection. But they had no conviction of sin and felt no need of repentance or of change of heart. They continue to do the same thing to worship their own gods and coming to the temple of God and committing those evils. With such concessions on their part, they profess that Christians should make concessions that all might unite on the platform of believing in Christ. Did Paul do this? Paul was teaching to them to repent because he told them judgment is coming for what you are doing. God has appointed Jesus Christ is coming to uh, uh, is coming actually to judge the world. But this is saying, no, there is no judgment. This is what the Pope is saying, no judgment. Just be as you are. Preach a dialogue with courage as religions. Ah, just come together. Where is the judgment? Where is the law of God, the standard of character to judge them and tell you, you are worshipping idols. How can you not tell them, we, we ourselves we are worshipping idols? When the Bible says the church was in fearful peril in that time, prison, torture, fire, and the sword were blessings in comparison with uh, this. Some of the Christians stood firm, declaring that they could make no compromise. Others were in uh, favor of yielding or modifying some uh, features of their faith and uniting to those who had accepted a part of Christianity, urging that this might be the means of their full conversion. That was a time of deep anguish to the faithful followers of Christ. Under a crock of pretended Christianity, Satan was insinuating himself into the church to corrupt their faith and turn their minds from the word of truth. So this compromise, uh, by uniting this thing, it brought evil. By yielding modifying features of the faith, uniting those who had accepted part of the Christian faith, that this was a way of learning. It casted the truth to the ground until we had people like Martin not Martin Ruta uh, who was to return the doctrines which were once delivered to the saints. Returning again what? John Wycliffe returning the word of God, the scriptures, which was rocked somewhere whereby only the so called priests were reading it. High learning. Yet the word of God the Spirit teaches his own people. Acts fifteen to twenty. But that we write unto you that you abstain from pollutions of idols and fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So you see, there was a specific message to separate them from those things. Here the Pope is saying, come with the way you are. We are together. We have put a preach here. Come, just come. There is no division now here, separation. Yet the Lord says in the book of uh, Corinthians, be here separate. What? Concord as an infidel with uh, Christ. Friends, accept Jesus Christ so the Lord so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. Finally, the Bible says, uh, let us ask the Holy Spirit today to teach us to pure preachers with culture with whomsoever does not believe or those who have a faith different from ours. Always pure preachers, always outstretched your hand no aggression no violence let us ask for the appeal to to dedicate three inculcate the message of faith so accommodate them the way they are mm. a dialogue yeah let's coexist it's actually the time they are using today's coexist coexistence live the way we are we are of us we will be saved as soon as universalism generally catholic means universalism will everybody be saved to everyone who believes, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, where is this universalism coming from? Whosoever believeth, not everyone. This universalism is devilish. He says, the devil said it in the beginning, did God did he say, live the way you are, you will be saved. You will not surely die. You will not even is your home. Live the way you are. Dress the way you are. You want eat the way you want. Do everything evil the way you will do. Heaven is your home. That's what the devil is generally saying. No aggregation. No aggression. No denouncing like Elijah saying, you know, Ahab, you have done evil. You have killed Napot. 
you have done evil no aggregation friends that is not the gospel the gospel of jesus christ uh, the spirit of jesus christ is a missionary spirit converting the world back to him the people those who receive those who believe most of the christians at last consented to lower their standards and a union was formed between christianity and paganism although the worshippers of idols uh, professed to be converted and united with the church they still clung to their idolatry only changing the objects of their worship to images of jesus and even of mary and the saints the four leaven of idolatry thus brought into the church continued it is perilous work and sound doctrines superstitions superstitious rites like sunday idolatry ceremonies were incorporated into our faith and worship as the follower of Christ united with idolaters the christian religion became corrupted and the church lost our purity and power there were some however who were not misled by these delusions they still maintained their fidelity to the author of truth and worship the god alone gc page 43 paragraph 2 last three acts 17 16 now while paul waited for them at hathens his spirit was tied in him the spirit of the lord said this is wrong but the bible saying when paul saw that one he said just come the way you are we want to welcome you the way you are no the spirit of paul at hathens was tied the bible says now when paul waited for them at hathens his spirit was tied in him he said this is wrong these people needed to be saved when he saw the city whole holy given to idolatry First Kings chapter 15 verse 12 Now let's see why there is a lot of gayism in the land what is there is a lot of lesbianism what there is a lot of what all these corrupt things in the land is because of a uh, idol worship worshiping Mary worshiping worshiping what worshiping idols which were incorporated into the church all this one in the time past let's see first kings what happened in history let's see historically first kings chapter First Kings chapter 15 verse 12 And this is Asa and he took away the Sodomites out of the land who are Sodomites These are same sex marriages he took away the Sodomites out of the land after taking them out of the land he did God and removed all the idols that his fathers had made what brought the problem in the land is idols he took away all the idols because they became a snare the lord said to the children of israel if you shall have these idols they shall become a snare unto you you will forget me you will incorporate them you will forget the pure gospel this which is able to save you and to bring to you or to save you to redeem you the best way to make you perfect that are defined unto good works friends that is scripture and that is the truth as the lord live it lastly pop dialogue between the religions and culture is important for jerusalem at this time message from uh, francis to the international conference dedicated to the 800th anniversary of the custody of the holy land following the example of saint francis spread spread friendship solidarity and peace everywhere so those who will not unite will be a trouble friends conscience obedience to the word of god will be treated as a serpion whereby the bible says what conquered as an infidel what conquered as crossed with an infidel first corinthians chapter 6 the direct the, di- the dignitaries of church and the state will unite to bribe persuade or compel all classes to honor the sunday great controversy page 592 this is part of the message we are to cover today and generally in conclusion to that Uh, what we wind up with is that my dear brethren be faithful uh unto the lord don't drink the wine or doctrines of rome this is the woman of revelation chapter 17 and even the peace first peace of revelation chapter 17 uh uniting with the america the second peace of revelation chapter 13 who are going to force the last resort would be force we want peace Daniel chapter 8 verse 25 and by peace he shall destroy many because they are marching to perdition they are marching to hell narrow is the way going to heaven friends narrow is the way friends don't take the wine of sodom don't take the wine of sodom of this false pride false doc- uh, pride whose mind is upon the earth not in heaven people says in 
Romans chapter 12 verse 1 put your mind be transformed put your mind in heaven not upon the things of the world not upon the things of uh, the world so generally we have had wonderful truths thank you so much for joining uh, Adventist uh, Angels Watchman Radio now you have understood who is leading the world in such a time like this my dear brother my dear sister I pray that you be faithful wherever you are call upon the Lord where he is near hold the truth be faithful my dear sister my dear mom my dear brother my dear brother wherever you are hold the truth understand stand stand who shall be able to stand in that such a day let's uh, humble ourselves as we pray master the king of the universe father and lord we come before you and thank you because you have allowed us you've given us the chance to speak thy word and to hear from thee bless us and save your people as this word touches and reaches unto them in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray father that you prepare us for the rain give us thy spirit Oh, wash us, make us clean, give us thy spirit. Be with us to the end in Jesus' mighty name. We pray and we believe. Amen. Be blessed. Thank you for your time. And thank you so much for choosing Adventist angels watching a radio, reaching to every nation, to every tribe and people, to every language. As we share the word of the Lord. Find us on our website, Adventist Angels Watching a Radio.com. Email Adventist Angels Watching a Radio at Outlook.com. Our contacts is given on the screen at 422-8119, starting with the country code, plus 254-1105-26011, and plus 254-7422-8119. My name is Evangelist King Osemo. Peace be with you. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready and get at us to be ready. Goodbye.